Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryan here and got a CCNA quick tip video for you today on access servers, telnet, and a keystroke comparison. So you're going to have to trust me on this one. It's quick and there's definitely some good stuff here to know for your home lab, production networks, and of course your CCNA exam. Now I do get messages just about every single day via email, Twitter, Facebook, what have you, uh, asking how I move around between the routers and the switches in my videos. And I do that with an access server. Now I do have two longer videos here on the YouTube channel that show you the configuration and the topology. They're well worth watching even if you don't have a home lab but you're working on your uh, CSENT or your CCNA. UNPers ought to watch those too. It'll take you about 15 minutes to watch the two. So obviously we're not going to go over every single detail here but a couple of gotchas that you need to know about for your exams as well. So I will put the bit.ly URLs on the last screen of this video. You can just go out to YouTube also and my channel and search for Access Server Cisco and you'll come up with them immediately. But right now I want to open a connection to a router from my Access Server, suspend it and reopen it and show you a couple of little gotchas that you ought to know about. Now right now we're on my Access Server and this is the central device in my rack and it is connected via an octal cable to every other device here. And the reason I have to go with certain names is because that's what I've created in my IP host table. Again, I do recommend you watch those two longer videos because I do go into more detail there. But right now, I'm just going to hit R1 and enter it. And it's going to say open, but the cursor is going to flash. You actually have to hit the key twice to make that happen, to make the prompt come up. Now, when I want to go back to the access server, and that's the real joy of the AS, is that you're not moving a cable around all the time uh, to go from one device to another. You're just doing it all from here. So let's say that I've configured router one, I've done my config, I've done what I came to do. Now I want to go back to the access server and go to another router because that's what you have to do. You're always going back to the access server. And there's a certain keystroke that I used right there and I hope you saw it. Just kidding. Uh, it is control shift six and then an X. And if that sounds familiar or kind of similar to another keystroke you've learned, I'm going to show you that on the whiteboard in just a moment so you don't get them confused. But what I just did there is I suspended the Telnet session. Now let's say I want to go back to router one right now. I say, oh man, I forgot to do such and such. Let me go back out there. Well, if I enter the full host name right now, this is what I'm going to get, and this is what throws people, because it certainly did me the first time I saw it. You get a message that says, connection refused by remote host. And you kind of get that attitude of, well, wait a minute, you know, I was just there. What do you mean it was refused? Well, the reason it's refused is that I'm trying to open another one instead of just opening the suspended session. So what you do here instead is just use your line number, which is one, and now I'm back on router one. So what I like to do when I get on the access server is just open all the lines, open all the telnet connections, and then just use the numbers to go back and renew those sessions. So let me show you that on the board one more time. Suspend reverse telnet session, that's what we did just now to go back to the access server. It's control shift six and then an X. So it's two separate entries, one right after the other. And what that might have seemed familiar to you from is the keystroke that we use to terminate a ping or a trace route. And what you do there is you just do control shift six twice, one right after the other. There is no X involved. That is your quick tip for today. Again, I've put the links here, the bit.ly links, at the bottom of this screen where I also have our Twitter, YouTube, blog, and Facebook addresses. So make sure when you've got a few more minutes to go out there and watch those videos, they're well worth your time. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you tomorrow with another CCNA Quick Tip.